What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys Kali Linux. Now, as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to show you guys Kali Linux. And Kali Linux, if you didn't know, it's a distribution, it's a Linux distribution that's used in the cybersecurity field. And I've done a couple videos on it in the past. I've actually done a, a walkthrough of actually installing Kali Linux, but they came out with a newer version of Kali or a new release of Kali. And I just wanted to kind of do a fresh update of that review so i'll walk through the installation of actually installing calyx and just some basic usage of, of getting familiar with the os now let me go down and bring up their website right fast so you guys can see what cali linux is all about now i was actually supposed to do this video a while back because the this release of cali actually happened what about three weeks ago and the version is 2020.04 and just to explain a little bit more, it's mainly the OS is mainly built for ethical hacking. And like I stated, it is heavily used in the cybersecurity field. So if you're looking to get into that field, this is one of the distributions you want to actually learn how to use or at least get familiar with the tools in it. Because a lot of the tools are used there like standard practice when it comes to getting into the cybersecurity field. Now, with this latest version of Kali, they actually have a couple updates to the OS that I'll go on and show you guys right fast. So I'm actually at the website right now. Just give me one second to pull it up. But there we go. So Kali Linux and the website is Kali.org. And this is where you can actually look at all the documentation as well as get the ISO so you can go on and install it. And I recommend you just go on and install it in a virtual machine just so you can play around with it and get familiar with the tools itself. But the first, let me go on and read this article right fast. Like I said, it was released, what, November? So last month this newer version and i just wanted to cover a few of the things that are different from this from the previous release and one thing at the top as you can see it says zsh is the new default shell and you know typically the bash is the shell that you would use on most linux distributions but they are, they do have other shells that you can use well zsh is another one so you might want to look into how to use zsh if you if you understand bash then you can pretty much pick up zsh but they changed that in this new release of cali as well as bash shell makeover it may not function like zsh but now bash looks like zsh and they created a partnership with tool authors and it says we're teaming up with uh bitblader uh aws image refresh uh packaging guides uh new tools and updates it says new kernel and various new tools and updates for existing ones as well as setting proxy chain for as default which that that looks cool uh net hunter updates so it comes with some updates for net hunter um win kx uh 2.5 and vagrant and vmware support so that's a few of the differences that are added within this release so you guys can check out this article uh and it kind of goes through everything like the zsh zsh shell by default uh, if we go down a little further you know it'll show you some of the things that is that has been changed uh, as far as bash you know you can make it look like zsh which is pretty cool and if we go down here uh crap mac exec i mean crack map exec uh there's that's one of the two authors that they're collaborating with uh, and it let me just read a little bit about this too because i'm not familiar with this actual tool or a set of tools uh but it says cali linux is for the of the greater community and we want to support authors where possible if you have not heard of crap mac x or cme you may be missing a trick or three when it comes to doing infrastructure assessment especially involving active directory so oh this is cool this is an active directory tool and i'm assuming it allows you to audit active directory or audit 
and infrastructure, which is super dope or whatever. If you, you know, start looking into actually doing this, this may be a tool that may help you because a lot of the companies out here that you may be auditing uh, run Windows systems. So they have Windows servers and most likely Active Directory. So this may be a tool you might want to familiar yourself with. So that's super cool. But you can read this article, you know, a little bit further. Uh, and that way you can get a clear understanding of all the updates. But let's go on and get to the install of actual Kali. Now, let me bring up my virtual machine right fast. And that way we can go on and go through the install. Okay, cool. So this is what you'll be greeted once you download the ISO and burn it to a USB drive or whatever and boot up on your system. So this is the actual, this is how you actually get into the installer. Now they have a graphical installer, they have a regular installer, and I'm assuming this installer may be command line base. I'm not 100% sure. I, I've never messed with that one. I always use the graphical installer. But that should work fine for what you're trying to do. Just use the graphical installer. It's the simplest. All you have to do is follow the instructions and go through the full process. So let's go ahead on and uh, press enter there. And let's wait for it to boot up into the lives. And it'll actually go straight to the installer. You don't have to, uh, it won't pull up like an operating system or a live IS or a live system. Uh, you can just go straight to the installer. And just so you guys know, they do have multiple installers. And that's one thing I forgot to show you guys on the website. But if we go back there right fast, you, you'll see that they have multiple installers when you go to the downloads page. I meant to show you guys that first. Uh, just go download Kali. They have the installer, which I downloaded the installer. Or you can download the live ISO. Uh, and that'll allow you to boot the system up live and use it from the actual live ISO. So let's get back to the installer right fast. Let me switch the screen back up. Boom, so we are back there and let's run through this install right fast. So English, you just basically select the language that you want. I'm gonna use English, United States for me, uh, American English for the keyboard layout and it'll detect hardware and everything. This is a virtual machine, so it doesn't matter. For me, it shouldn't take you know too long to get to the actual guts of the installer so let's go down and wait a couple more seconds get our network connections it'll automatically do this this installer is just so much simpler nowadays you know what i'm saying it, it used to be a little bit more involved uh but it's pretty simple uh i'll leave the host name is cali which is fine um, now, if you want to add it to domain or if you want to create a domain name for it, uh, you can do that. But we're not going to do that. You you don't need to. So um, and I'll type in, you know, my username, it says, you know, full name, because that's typically where you would type in like your full name of your account. Uh, but you don't have to type that in. You can just put your username there and then it'll automatically create your username based on the information you typed in the first uh, spot so we'll hit continue there uh, so Josh is fine you know access for our username or password I'm sorry and we can go down to the next one and type in our password again and this account that is creating will have pseudo privileges so you don't have to worry about going in and figuring that now I'm on the west coast so Pacific press continue there and this is where it'll detect the horror drives. It'll create the partitions. Well, it'll ask you how you want to create the partitions. Now you could do the use entire disk, which is what I'm gonna do. But you can also, you know, set up LVM as well as encrypted LVM. Um, and then you can also do the manual, uh, which we're not gonna do. We're just gonna use the guided. I'm gonna use the entire disk. Now, one thing about it, after this step, you can actually specify if you want your home directories in on a separate partition i'll show you guys that uh so here we go it says uh all files on one partition so that means that it'll take that 40 gigabyte hard drive that we created or virtual hard drive that i created for this virtual machine it'll take that full 40 gigabytes hard drive and create one big partition and it'll put the home directory and all that stuff on one partition 
Now, the way I started using Linux, I always was taught to separate my home directory. And that way, when it makes it easier when you're reinstalling the system, because you can tell it not to touch that home directory and you can install specifically the operating system and then point it to the home directory later or create that new account later and then point it to the home directory that you have on that other partition without it wiping the full drive and typically you know you want to put your home directory on a different drive all together that's that's typically how i do it i have one hard drive that handles my operating system and then the other hard drive that has my home directory on it and my home directory i typically do my home direct home directory encrypted so in case somebody gets my computer or robs you know take my computer they can't get my home directory as long as the system is shut down now i'm gonna do uh all files on one partition press continue and then it'll say are you sure it'll tell you what it's gonna do it's gonna create a swap space of one gigabyte which is fine even though i gave this virtual machine like eight gigabytes of uh ram virtual ram uh but that's typically what it does i guess so uh let's just move forward with that you don't you don't really need much swap space uh when you're messing with when you have a lot of ram so uh, that's one thing i've typically seen so let's hit continue there and keep moving and it's gonna ask you are you sure do you want to write these changes it'll write those changes and we're good to go so now it's gonna partition and then install the base system but that's pretty much the installation process and i'll come back with this system booted up from there okay cool so this is one step i forgot that was gonna pop up but this is how you actually customize cali uh it'll pop up through the install at after it installs the base operating system uh so basically this is everything that'll sit on top so a desktop environment uh, and you can select what desktop environment you want to want to use. And of course, I like XFCE, so I'm gonna just select F XFCE for this demonstration, as well as it'll ask you if you want to install some of the popular tools. So it says collection of tools, selecting this item has no effect, um, and then top 10 most popular tools. So pretty much all the tools that you would typically use or the top 10 um tools that most people use when they're doing security training and penetration testing so it's basically the top tools that you would use in those cases uh as well as it says default uh recommended tools available in live systems so these are some of the default tools as well now you can also select the large uh which will download a whole bunch of additional tools that are typically found on Cali or actually associated with Cali, you know, a lot of those tools that are not put on the live CD, they'll be included with this. And they're basically all downloaded from the from the web and installed through the installation process. But that takes a very long time. So if you don't have, you know, a good internet connection, uh, as well as a good system that, you know, runs through these installations pretty quick, then it'll take a, a while. So I wouldn't recommend you doing that unless, you know, you got a lot of drive space because it takes up a lot of drive space as well. It'll take up a pretty decent amount of drive space when it comes to all the tools that it installs on your system. So the default is fine. It's good enough for this demonstration. I just wanted to kind of show you guys this before the system finishes the install and come back up. And the last step, it'll actually ask you to install Grub. You just select the drive that you want to install grub on which is the default partition uh sda1 you know sda and it'll install grub there and the bootloader and all that stuff set all that up for you and then reboot and then the system will be up so i'll be back when that actually finishes so be back in a sec okay cool so the installation is done and we have the system up and running let's go down and log into it and i'll just show you a little bit about it uh i won't go too deep uh you have to look at the tutorials or they got plenty of tutorials online or on youtube where people go through how to use some of these tools which i have some knowledge on but 
still learning a lot of it as well so so yeah this is that xfce desktop let me go down and fix a, the uh display settings right fast that way you guys can fully see the system all right cool i installed that xfce desktop so that's what this is so uh it's pretty simple to use uh i've done plenty of videos showing you guys the xfce desktop but these are your like standard options you know you got your shut down you know lock uh, battery settings sound settings or alert sa sound settings uh, and network settings and a calendar uh, and if we go over here this is where you get to all your tools so this is basically your start menu just like any of them uh, they have a start menu and then these are all the forensic tools or tools that will be used in cybersecurity uh, that you may want to start learning how to use if you're trying to get into this field and as you can see it's kind of broken up in different categories they got information gathering tools vulnerability analysis tools web application analysis database assessment password attacks uh, wireless attacks reverse engineering exploit exploitation tools uh, sniffing spoofing post exploitation uh, forensics uh, and reporting tools and then also social engineering tools as well as Kali and offensive security links. So that's basically information from offensive security as far as uh, links in their form, you know, and uh, the list of tools, you know, all the documentation you can get to it through there. But yeah, I won't, like I said, I didn't want to go too deep. I don't want to show you the tools because I could go through them, but it'll extend this video out a whole lot longer. But Hopefully you guys got some out of it. Like I said, if you're trying to get into the cybersecurity field, this is a great place to start. They also have another distribution out there called Parrot OS, which features a lot of these tools. And then one thing I wanted to say about cybersecurity, you don't need to actually use Kali. You don't need to use Parrot OS. It's just the distribution has put together all the tools in one place. So you can install a distribution and it's there. But like you could take a install of ubuntu and install a lot of these tools where well, most of them are all on a ubuntu distribution so it's no need to actually have one of these you can create your own distribution so to speak you can create your own system with all the tools that you would use in order to do cybersecurity or pen testing you set up your own pen test distro by just installing whatever distribution you want and then getting all the tools putting them together it's just this makes it a whole lot better so check this out this might be one of the first places you need to start this desktop is very simple to use uh, all you have to do is you know type sudo apt update is you know debian based um, so it uses the app to dash get package manager so it's if you're familiar with ubuntu you're familiar with you know debian then you understand how to use the apt dash get package manager so it's very simple to use but i hope you guys enjoyed the video again please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it techie